New Argos. Let's talk about it. My name is Neeb, welcome back to Aromatics. We're gonna be talking about one of the newest additions to the Argos family, and it's gonna be Birth of Venus. A couple of weeks ago, I had an interview, a live interview with the owner, CEO, and perfumer of this brand, Christian Petrovich, and it was a pretty interesting interview. We talked about all of the new fragrances, the plans, and moving forward. It's a very interesting fragrance company that surrounds itself or its motto is all about the luxury. And luxury is personally all I see when I look at these bottles in the presentations. A lot of attention paid to the details of the fragrance, including the glass. And as time progresses, all I see is continued improvements. Top dollar presentation, but rightfully so because you're paying top dollar money for something like this. Birth of Venus is a fragrance that I rocked the other day when I went out for a late night dinner. And on initial impression with this one, I found that this is... 85% feminine. I mean, it's not 100% feminine of a fragrance, so it's about 15% unisex. So I feel like there is going to be a small audience of men that might enjoy rocking this fragrance, but there are a couple of notes that makes this one uh, lean more so feminine. And the notes that we're talking about is going to be a lot of those florals like the jasmine, there's the peach, there's some raspberry, rose, chocolate, and I feel like those are the main distinctive notes that makes this one lean a bit feminine. I get a lot of the fruits at the top, specifically peach, and like like I said, that's what I find to make this one a lot more uh, feminine leaning. So we're gonna go ahead and spray this bad boy on and go from there. Beautiful atomizer. Chanel, you've got some competition. So initial blast, you're gonna get a hefty dose of straight up juicy peach. Juicy peach, orange blossom, and a couple of those other citruses. The grapefruit is there, but it's not very strong. It's not something that's distinctively bitter as most people would think with the uh, natural grapefruit. But this one, however, has a hefty dose of that jasmine, which does counteract the bitterness and adds this natural sweetness. So shortly after you get this blast of a juicy peach, you start to get these white florals, slightly musky with that natural honey. And after that, you're going to sense something that's a bit jammy and fruity at the same time. It's the raspberry. The raspberry and rose combination in this fragrance is intoxicating. The citruses haven't completely dropped off. You have this melody of white florals and that red rose, and it's got this nice base of natural sweetness. It doesn't stop there. Jamminess of the raspberry starts to contribute more of a sweetness, and you start to get this chocolate, creamy chocolate quality that starts to really warm up in the fragrance. I start to get this raspberry chocolate bar vibe with a lot of those florals it hasn't really gone anywhere, but that's what I start to distinctively pinpoint. It's not just raspberry and chocolate though. Nearing the mid, strangely enough, I start to get more of the orange blossom. At the top, it's not really shining as much as the peach, but once the peach starts to dry off or dissipate, my guess is that the peach is gonna be a little bit more diffusive than that orange blossom. The orange blossom does get to uh, shine a little bit more and blends beautifully with the raspberry, the chocolate, and really some of those white florals. So naturalistic smelling, extremely white floral dominant with that chocolate and the raspberry. And as this one starts to dry down, you're gonna drop a lot of that uh, sweetness and it starts to turn a bit more ambery, woody, and creamy. The lab denim in this fragrance contributes a little bit of a leather nuance that's not by any means going to be anything animalic. It's not gonna be anything bold, but rather it just blends in very beautifully, creating this nice dense base for the entire fragrance. Fruity jasmine, raspberry, and chocolate. It. Amber's in the dry down. Once it dries down, it has a little bit of woodiness. Complex breakdown for a complex fragrance, but rather simple and beautifully composed. A great fragrance from the Argos family, but this one, like I said, is going to be 85% feminine leaning. I rocked this on my shirt and I wore the shirt the next day. It was so easy to smell it still on the very same shirt that I wore. Total performance on skin is going to be about eight hours and on clothing easily 12 plus hours. Projection on this one, it's going to be more of like a scent trail. You're going to be leaving scent trails of this raspberry white florals type of vibe. So basically that was my experience with Birth of Venus, a great fragrance, beautifully composed, and the performance was just enough for me. If you own this fragrance or if you've been looking into checking this fragrance out, I highly suggest you check out Argos. Use my code. I'll leave it all down in the links. You don't necessarily have to jump into a full bottle. You could always grab you some samples. My code works even for those samples. So for the quality of these fragrances, you should absolutely at least make it a thing to check them out. One of my favorite from the houses is Adonis Awakens. And then it's going to be Danye and Triumph of Bacchus is also a great fragrance. If you enjoyed watching this video, make sure to leave a like, hit that subscribe button, and until the next one, peace.